I was on Coast to Coast AM last night breaking some of that down. John Rappaport, I said, what do you want to get into today? Just some wild card issue. And he goes, free energy or other forms of alternative energy that are being suppressed while they prepare to cut off our old forms of energy. And he's really got a lot of intel on that. We're going to spend a lot of the next hour uh, on that subject. If you go up to DrudgeReport.com, it's now scrolled down to the bottom right-hand side. You can find an article that we put out last night. Uh, and it says, uh, in the U.S., four major n news networks, zero Bilderberg 2014 coverage. Only some CNBC coverage. Drudge covered it. Infowars covered it. WorldNet Daily covered it. A whole bunch of European newspapers covered it. But no news in the U.S. other than one cable network. And that's because people want to know about business, so it was business news. And it's just incredible that uh, not even Fox News would cover this. Last year, uh, Napolitano did cover it when he was filling in on one of the shows on Fox Business. So, again, that's why they're becoming obsolete is because they won't talk about world leaders meeting in secret when the world leaders brag in their own minutes and told German News that they're more powerful than Davos. So I'm going to get Rappaport's take on that. Uh, John Rappaport coming up, riding shotgun with us. ...project to build an oil pipeline through there. There's all kinds of military, geopolitical, economic reasons that were over there. And then, of course, you've got the rules of engagement, which would drive anybody crazy. You know, do you have to call back to get permission to kill somebody in case you don't know who they are and they might have a gun and they're ready to kill you and you're going to do two or three tours like this? I mean, the whole idea that, yes, we're over there, we're, we're an army, we're not just an intelligence group, but we're an army, we're killing people, this is a war, but we can only kill certain people a certain amount of the time and we're helping other people build villages and so forth all at the same time. This is not what an army does. This is not the way an army can operate. This creates crazy people, people that want to walk away, people that want to kill themselves. And then you put them on all kinds of uh, psychiatric drugs, which they use to self-medicate themselves over there that cause suicide like the SSRI antidepressants. And you've got a complete catastrophe as witnessed by uh, what's happening at the VA now. So I go back to saying this is a major distraction, this whole prisoner exchange thing, to cover up the deep corruption at the VA. Well, I agree with you. Uh, man, I tell you, I mean, I know they built Obama up as the savior, and he's meant to be politically destroyed by the end so a new savior can come in, but he is rotting on the vine really fast right now. I mean, can they leave him in another two years, or, or, or will he end up getting impeached or something? I don't see any way he can be impeached. He's, he's there till the end. And then they're all, the media are all going to try to celebrate his presidency and do all sorts of, you know, retrospectives. You can count on, uh, you know, endless amounts. Exactly. They'll tear him down, let him fall on the sword, then they'll build him back up later. Sure. Just like they did to Clinton. And you even see it a little bit with uh, Bush. <clears throat> they always do the same thing. And and Obama is going to take place in the pantheon of great presidents eventually by revisionist history. But that finally comes to an end. I mean, the cynicism, the 9% the, the approval rating as low as 6 for Congress. I mean, this is not the same old cycle anymore. I don't see him getting away with it. I want to talk about that with you when we get back. And something we talked about on the Sunday show. That's why I wanted to get you back today because we ran out of time. Let's spend some time on positive stuff first. What it is to be free, where the world's going, how we can change ourselves inside to change the world outside. Then we'll get into energy uh, and the energy game they're playing. I agree with your analysis, some of the articles you've written at nomorefakenews.com. I want you to break down that deep, uh, informed view coming up straight ahead and a little bit of Bilderberg News with John Rappaport. I'm Alex Jones. This is GCNlive.com. Why does the United States spend the largest percentage of GDP in the world on health care? Why do we have the highest cancer rates on the planet? The highest rates of diabetes, autism, and every other major disease. It all comes down to one thing. We are what we eat. Our food is devoid of nutrition and processed with poisons and additives. Our water is filled with toxic poisons and big pharma runoff. All of this has been engineered. 
That's right, and the great InfoWars.com crew with the nightly news studios and more are up there in Austin, Texas. I am down on the coast of Texas, a uh, you know, one week, not even vacation, working vacation with my children so that we can do a little bit of body surfing and spend time with them before they grow up. But I'm down here pretty much working about half, half speed. Uh, with the family and we'll be uh, co-hosting uh, the uh, news radio show all five days this week at least part of the time and we're going to have paul watson david knight and so many others some of the stories up on infowars.com sergeant uh, burgle if you pronounce it that way uh, release arranged by cia terror group Police interrogate protesters for entering Bilderberg Hotel a day after they leave. There's video of that by Paul Joseph Watson on InfoWars.com. White House launches propaganda at troll level, actually buying Google keywords now to put out their lies. Dems defense Bilderberg 2014 blow wide open a big boil down article Bilderberg mental health screening a good way to decrease liberty poor way to increase security Ron Paul the velocity of money in the U.S. falls to an all time record low as the money's devalued but first I wanted to finish up with Bilderberg and then get into some positive news with John Rappaport of NoMoreFakeNews.com who's giving us his commentary today and will be hosting the last 40 minutes of the show today just because I want to hear him do a presentation on What's really happening with energy? This affects everybody. I don't own stock in energy, or I'm not. I don't work for it. energy's your number one cost, and then this is where they're really gaming us. You want to conquer somebody? Control the energy. So we're gonna from the calories our kids eat to the oil in our cars to the coal power plants to the solar farms to the wind farms. There, it's all gamed, folks. The globalists are scientific in their takeover. Read eco science. They break down the control of energy at every level. But we saw them black out the windows at Bilderberg and put up fences and go to the greatest links ever in Copenhagen, Denmark, to block the public and the press this year. But then, on like the sixth floor, men all come up in robes, all holding on to each other, acting weird, and have some pretty boy come and wave at everybody and flaunt it at the media. And General Petraeus would come to the window and stare at people and others and you know, just really act weird. And I guess they're really mad it's being exposed. They can't deny there's a shadow global government. This is really coming out. Um, we're showing some video of that for TV viewers right now. Radio listeners can go to InfoWars.com and see the videos in HD. But uh, what do you think is really behind all this? Black the windows out, but have multiple Bilderberg Group members come out and talk to the press and the public saying we're no big deal. That have, ever, uh, have other Bilderberg members tell the German press we actually you know, pretty much run things. Uh, and the leader of the Dutch parliament say, I don't violate the law being here to discuss government policy because we're public. Well, no, you're not public. So are they scared of indictment? There's talk of that in England. Uh, why are they blacking out windows but leaving one open and having men, old men, parade around with a pretty boy, uh, you know, scantily clothed in, in bathrobes? What is this really all about? Are they acting like they don't care that we know because they actually do care? John Rappaport. <laughs> it's a complicated situation, but point number one is I think they have to make a pretense that this is now public because it is, because it's been exposed. So they can't go around anymore saying secret Bilderberg, secret Bilderberg, because everybody knows about it now. Or, I mean, through Infowars and other alternative media, people realize it. So they have to make a pretense of saying they're public. Otherwise, they could be indicted. They couldn't be indicted for doing national government business as an international secret society, which they are. So on the one hand, they've got to now sort of give the impression, hey, we're not we're trying to conceal anything. We're, here we are, you know, and we'll have a conversation with you and with you and so on and so forth. On the other hand, you've got some of the crazier members uh, who are still back in the Stone Age trying to conceal the whole thing and blocking out windows. And then you've got the real loons in their, you know, white bathrobes doing God knows what. Reminds me of your old uh, expose of the Bohemian Grove business. I mean, so I think you've got several different factions there operating at the same time, giving a contradictory appearance. But the main thrust here is I think they finally decided 
that they have to now pretend that they're out in the open so that they can avoid criminal prosecution. Because, I mean, you can't, no nation's laws permit government people to go to an, in a secret international conference and make policy decisions outside their own government. I mean, they put you in prison for that if they catch you or if they want to catch you. So that's why I think you're seeing a little bit of this, oh, you know, we're just a bunch of guys sitting around. Of course, we're meeting here. We're not trying to hide anything. And uh, I looked up the floor plan of that uh, Marriott Conference Center. Uh, the gym is down on the lower floor. Uh, they were in a suite uh, in a bunch of bathrobes ho holding on to each other with a pretty boy in the middle of them, flaunting and, and, and teasing everyone. And, I mean, that's very sophomoric behavior, and I don't know what the point of it is. And I agree with you. It just it shows different factions, and that's what it is, bidding for control of the, of the main levers of power. Now, I want to talk about the essence of being free. We don't need government to make us free. We begin to act like free beings, and the rest will follow. We ran out of time Sunday talking about that. I wanted to recap that briefly as we go to break. But before we go there and come back with your energy presentation that I won't be here for, we'll have a six-minute segment, an 18-minute segment, and a six-minute segment to finish out the show uh, here today because I don't want you to be interrupted getting into that, John. But I want to be clear on energy. I want to explore our oil. I want to explore natural gas. I, I want to use coal because we have clean burning plants because that's the energy we have. But I also know they've blocked a lot of the free energy, the zero point stuff. It's come out, they've been blocking it, discrediting it, trying to control the new energy systems by only giving money to their friends who never even build anything or build something that's a fraud or build something that's 60 year old alternative energy. So they're blocking renaissance in this. And some of the you know, alternative energy people go, how dare you promote you know, an oil boom in the US while claiming you're for new forms of energy. Well, that's hypocritical. Of course, I'm for more. Whatever we've currently got, we need more of. Better than the Saudi Arabians, better to have low prices while developing new systems. I don't think the two conflict with each other at all. Uh, I mean, I'm absolutely for North American oil exploration. I want it to be done good. I don't like fracking in populated areas. There's a good way to do fracking versus a bad way. Uh, they can define fracking as any type of drilling. So, so, I mean, it's the Saudi Arabians. We've caught them funding the main anti-fracking movement. That's just a fact. Uh, you know, and because they don't want uh, stuff being developed here. Well, most of our oil exploration is not fracking. So I want to let you break it all down coming up. I wanted to throw that in. Now, take us out to break. We're going to break here in about three minutes. So I'm now going to turn things over to you, John. You'll hear the music. You take us out. You intro us. We'll take the training wheels off here and let you host the show because you're you know, a great guy and I know can do it. But briefly, take us out what the essence of freedom is for John Rappaport. And I will see everybody else tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central here with the weekday show. Uh, Alex Jones handing the baton off to John Rappaport. Thanks so much, Alex. At the end of the Sunday conversation that we had, you made the point, and it's absolutely correct, that Freedom is not something that's given to you by the government. I don't care what the documents are, even the founding documents. The founding documents did not create freedom as if it had never existed before. You individually have your freedom. You've always had your freedom. Everybody has that potential within them, and they have to know what that means at a profound level, not just some superficial level, because once you understand what it really means, your own freedom, independent from anything else then you begin to understand what you need to do now in this situation that we find ourselves and that's the big one but that's the first step the constitution did not create freedom the articles of confederation the declaration of independence they did not give people freedom that was never there to begin with it confirmed the freedom that every individual has and think of the disaster if individuals don't understand within themselves what their own freedom really is at the most profound level, then we're done. That has to change. That has to really, really change. So that's where we're going with uh, that conversation about freedom. It means that every individual begins with a contemplation of what his own liberty and freedom really means to him.
Does it mean that you can buy a soda at the 7-Eleven instead of at the liquor store? Is that where it goes? Does it mean that you can buy, uh, you know, a two-seater couch instead of a chair? Or a 1999 car uh, that's been completely remodeled? I mean, is that the limit of what freedom means? That you can take a vacation? Is that what it's all about? Is that the beginning and the end of it? Is freedom mean that you can shut your eyes to what's happening in the world and that nobody's going to punish you for retreating into a little burrow somewhere? Is that what your freedom means? Nobody can say to you what your freedom means. You have to find it. You have to decide. And you have to go down below the everyday nonsense of social conversation and uh, mainstream media and so forth to find out what that is. You would think that would be part of the educational system, don't you think so? Thomas Jefferson, as part of the founding of the public education system, wanted it to be the education of citizens. Because why? Because he said this was a republic unlike any other form of government that ever existed. Therefore, the entire purpose of the education system should be to educate uh, children into understanding what the role of a citizen would be in a republic. Do you find any discussion of freedom now in school? No, you don't. We'll be back in Forwards Radio Show. Just to wrap up what I was saying about freedom, do you know any schools in America where this is the issue, as it should be? I uh, wrote a 2,000-word uh, essay on what it means to you to be free in this country now. Why not? Indeed, why not? What could be a greater issue? But if you happen to bring that up in the school these days, I mean, you could be suspended. Who knows what would happen? Individual freedom in an elementary school, uh, in a high school, in a college, university, you could be stoned. I mean, this is verboten. You cannot bring up this subject. This is not a subject for discussion, much less assignment in classes. Professor gets up at the beginning of a class in college and says, the most important thing you can learn about in college is your individual freedom, and that's what we're going to focus on in this class in philosophy of Ubladi, whatever. That guy's on a short leash from that moment on, that teacher. His career is going to be sidetracked if he persists in that. And yet, that's the basis of the country. That's what the Constitution was, Declaration of Independence. What happened? Complete overthrow, that's what happened. But that doesn't stop you as an individual from doing that work. Because when you hit pay dirt and you really understand at the most profound level what your freedom really means, what it is, then you know what to do. Then you understand. Then you can apply your mind. Not to some harebrained scheme, but to something that's going to contribute to turning this whole, whole, whole massive fascist oligarchy around. Okay. Energy. So now 30%, we're going to cut 30% of coal. No problem, the president says. This, in fact, is going to create more jobs. It's a miracle. I mean, he's got to be a magician, if not an outright messiah. If he can cut coal by 30% and yet, in the process, create more jobs and, and even more energy. This is like saying today is tomorrow, night is day, day is night. It's all 1984 lingo. At the same time, as Alex said in the last segment, and this is very important, you've got to keep the energy you have while you actually develop energy of the future. And I'm sorry to insult certain environmentalists about this, who I guess want to go back into the forest and scratch on the ground for roots and tubers and depopulate the planet down to about 100 million people. But in a society, a civilization, you've got to keep the energy you have while you develop actual new energy, not phony new energy, real energy new energy. Energy, in fact, energy technology that's been suppressed for a long time, which is what I'm going to get into for the remainder of the hour here. Actual energy suppression. 
For example, take the case of one Frank Schumann. Ever hear of Frank Schumann? A scientist, an engineer, 1862 to 1918. He was one of the primary originators of solar power, solar panels. He discovered a way to transfer solar energy into pipes within panels. And in fact, he built a factory in Egypt, which apparently runs to this present day, based entirely on solar in Mahadi. Pumps out 6,000 gallons of water, this solar energy engine per minute, 6,000 gallons per minute to cotton fields along the Nile. That's real. That's pretty good. That was back in the earliest days of the 20th century that this happened. This was the real technology back then. This had real legs. This could be utilized, in fact, was utilized, if you look at old photographs of Los Angeles all the way along the line in the early teens of the 20th century, you could see so panels on all the houses until the oil boom hit and it became obvious that this could be a monopoly for the few. I mean, we may not be able to control the sun, boys, because everybody's got access to it, but we can certainly control the oil. So what we have to do is destroy, suppress, defame, propagandize against all other forms of phony, phony, baloney energy and say it's all about oil, it always was and it always will be, and you still to this day hear propagandists with that line whenever anybody really seriously brings up alternative energy. I'm not talking about Obama or Bush or Clinton alternative energy. I'm talking about the real thing, which is a separate issue, quite apart from these phony schemes to create what looks like alternative energy when it actually isn't. We're going out here at the bottom of the hour. I'm sitting in for Alex Jones. This is John Rappaport, and we will be back after this break. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. I don't know what it is. Ralph just won't pay any attention to me. When he comes home from work, all he ever does is play video games and go to sleep. It's like I don't even exist. Oh, Betty, that's just awful. Does this seem familiar? If the answer to this question is yes, then listen carefully. Toxic pesticides, GMO foods and additives, BPA plastics, contaminated water supplies. Many of these toxic additives are deliberately engineered to a... Sitting in for Alex Jones for the rest of the hour. I just want to mention the tremendous work that all the crew at Infowars do. I mean, because I've been a reporter for 30 years, I understand how operations work. And to put this together without, you know, government subsidies and all kinds of easy cash, to actually make this an entrepreneurial news independent operation is far from easy, especially with about 50 people on board. The reporters and the crew do a great job. And they finance this whole operation on the basis of the products that they tell you about, that you buy, that are the best products they can possibly bring to you, that you will find at InfoWarsLife.com, which is the store. Especially two new products, X2, which is the nascent iodine, and Super Female Vitality. Those are two of the newest products in the store. I urge you to look into this, go to InfoWarsLife.com, the store, and support the crew at InfoWars and get yourself access to unique products at the same time. Okay? Okay. Make sure you do that. We're getting back to energy. And of course, those products are about energy. Energy is everywhere. How much energy do you have today? Can you last? Can you get through the day? How many cups of coffee do you need? How many Red Bulls? Everybody is involved with energy on some level, whether it's personal energy, energy to run their machines, their devices, their cars, their houses, their offices, places of business. The society, the civilization runs on energy. So what's the problem? Well, We don't have a problem with that. The problem is that the people who control this planet, 
the elites, they want to dominate the energy. Monopoly, cartel, that's what we're talking about. And oil is the perfect mechanism for this to do. And they can foment wars in the Middle East, where a lot of the oil is. And they can make oil seem scarcer. And they can raise the price. And they can manipulate the price up and down. Because they control the basic energy commodity of the planet. In their view, which they are promoting to you. To everybody. This is what we have, folks. We have oil. That's all we have. There's nothing else, really. If we give up the oil, we're all going to go into the darkness and the chaos, which is a complete lie. Because there have been many suppressed energy technologies. Not the woo-woo fairy tale, I put a crystal on the mantle and looked at it and suddenly my car started driving down the street. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about Frank Schumann that I spoke about in, in the last segment. This was a guy who, pine, an engineer who pioneered engines that ran on solar in the beginning of the 20th century. What happened to that? That was an, an existing, workable, useful, dramatic breakthrough technology right then and there at the beginning of the 20th century. 1913 started pumping 6,000 gallons of water per minute through that solar energy off of the Nile into cotton fields in Egypt. You would think somebody would get a clue from that. Revolutionize it. Let me tell you about something really extraordinary. Passamaquoddy. Passamaquoddy. The main state of Maine Passamaquoddy Tidal Basin Project that JFK was obsessively interested in since his days as a U.S. Senator. We're talking in the 19, late 1950s. In 1959, he went up to the state of Maine and looked over this proposal to build a tidal basin project right off the coast of Maine with a, a huge turbine because the height of the water tide every day was very high and very low and very high and very low, very good for turning a turbine and creating electricity, an enormous amount of electricity, get this, for the state of Maine. In 1962, he commissioned a report. He was president then. What is happening with Passamaquoddy? It's being stalled all these years. Different entities are fighting over it. Different cartels are trying to stop it. I want a report. The report was turned into President Kennedy. It was a positive report on the possibilities from Passamaquoddy, the Tidal Basin Project. Shortly after that, JFK was murdered, and the whole project went into abeyance. It's not just the Passamaquoddy Project. It's anywhere in the country, in America, it's anywhere in the world where there is a coastal inlet that has those conditions. There are many, 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 many coastal inlets all over the world that could be used to build these water turbine projects. This is not woo-woo, fairy tale, up in the clouds, alternative energy. This is straight ahead, down the line, electricity production, using the ocean, using the tides and turbines. Everybody knows about this. There's at least one company I researched some years ago, there are probably more now, that can put small turbines in rivers and produce energy for local communities. This is not strange, weird stuff. This is real stuff. And remember, Nikola Tesla, the famous inventor, when he died, the FBI and instantly raided his hotel room and took all of his papers and confiscated them. And what were those papers all about that have never been returned? They're about alternative energy, which is really mainstream breakthrough energy. When Tesla envisioned being able to supply free energy to the entire planet, or pennies worth of cost for free energy for the entire planet. What are we talking about when we talk about human health, folks? Think about this. Come on. 
We're talking about energy. What's the difference in energy level between a very sick person and a very healthy person? Human energy, not just energy to run cars, human energy. We've had a great deal of suppressed research about that, starting, not starting with, but including Royal Rife, the famous scientist in Southern California who developed his own breakthrough microscope that could observe microorganisms in action and his frequency generator that he used to experiment on these microorganisms and kill off destructive ones with frequencies. In his time, you can see the newspaper articles, they appeared in Southern California. He was heralded as a genius by medical authorities until, until he decided not to cooperate with them to form any sort of cooperative business venture, at which point he became persona non grata, at which point he became a fraud. All of a sudden, the man was a fraud. He was a genius yesterday, now he's a fraud. Now he's dangerous. Now he's evil. Now he's distracting people away from what can really cure cancer. <laughs> oh, baby. Reif cured, what was it, 16 people of cancer who were seriously ill with cancer. The newspaper articles appeared on this. It was verified. And then suddenly it never happened. Suddenly it didn't happen. Do you realize what we're talking about in terms of human energy uptake? The difference between somebody who is in desperate straits with cancer and a cured individual? What about Stan Brzezinski down in Texas? Houston. What is it? Seven grand juries, state and federal, that have been mounted to destroy Brzezinski because he invented his own medicine to treat cancer that was not part of the, uh, not part of the pharmaceutical complex, that worked on a number of patients. Brzezinski never overstated what he could do with his medicine, neoplastins. He continued to do research. He continued to treat people. I know a guy in Los Angeles personally who lives for, I'm going to say, 20 to 25 years longer than doctors said he could because he was treated by Brzezinski. And yet now, tremendous strictures and restraints on which patients Brzezinski is allowed to treat. Who can come to his clinic? What can he do with people as a doctor? And the legal assault never seems to stop on the guy. Grand jury after grand jury. They can indict a ham sandwich, is the saying about a grand jury, but no grand jury ever indicted Brzezinski. Why? Because they all realized that the DAs and the prosecutors were lying through their teeth when they tried to destroy this humanitarian doctor in Texas, and so they refused to turn back permission to prosecute. We're talking about human energy there, which is at least as vital as the energy to power a civilization through cables, through wireless means, whatever. We're looking at suppression of alternative technologies from top to bottom, all over the place, everywhere. And this JFK Passamaquoddy story you check it out on Google. In depth, Andrea Silverthorne, I believe, is the woman's name who did the original research on the full story behind this. The full story. We're talking about, you want a conspiracy and a scandal? A devastating scandal that ends up one way or another with the murder of the U.S. president and a project to liberate the country from oil monopolies, Passamaquoddy. These are incredible stories that I'm talking about here. Incredible human events. And what do they all point to? They point to the fact that for a very long time, we, the human race, have had the capacity to produce energy abundance in every conceivable way from many different vectors on this planet and that this has been suppressed by the energy cartels and monopolies and by the secret societies like 
Bilderberger, like the Council on Foreign Relations, like the Trilateral Commission, like the CIA, like many different groups behind the scenes, like mega corporations operating in concert with intelligence agencies. I'm not blowing smoke here, folks. Abundance is a viable principle that exists now for everybody on the planet. Through the means that have been discovered and invented and then suppressed. Suppressed to create the scarcity that we now face. The artificial money scarcity, the artificial job destruction, the artificial health destruction through the practice of toxic modern medicine, the artificial destruction of different avenues of energy from solar and ocean to more sophisticated means, as in the case of Tesla. The destruction of all of that by their suppression so that you and I and everybody else are now living in an artificially created world. That's the reality that has been imposed upon us. And thousands and hundreds of thousands of lying, deceiving, scum, propagandists, public pundits, fake scientists have cooperated, have sold their souls to prop up the idea that we are living in a world on a planet of extreme scarcity and it's tooth for tooth, claw against claw all the way when that has not been the case for a very long time. This is the secret in the temple of the monopolies. This is what they are concealing. And in the field of energy, it's absolutely monstrous. And there are many more energy breakthroughs that I could mention here, but I wanted to focus on a few to set you exploring, to set you finding out for yourself. This is the case. When you drive your car to the pump and you look at the price, you're not just looking at the manipulated money price of oil. You're looking at the, a far greater manipulation. You're looking at the destruction of societies and civilizations based on this premise that oil is all we've got, folks. Oil is all we'll ever have. And to assure you once again, I'm not with the people who say, well, we have to shut down all the oil and while we're at it, all the coal and shut down everything because I want to go out into the forest and crawl along the floor and eat roots and tubers and live in a tree. Uh-uh. <laughs> that's not my goal in life I'm not talking about that I'm talking about the fact that we keep the energy avenues open that we have now and we actually let in the door the suppressed technologies which by now would have obviated our need for oil it would have been done as it was supposed to be done you see, it's not depopulate the planet. Let's go back to living in trees and let the few barons of the estate run the entire earth. That's not the picture. That was never a sane picture for anybody. Only the lunatics running the asylum thought that was a good idea and still think it is. No, in the natural scheme of things, by the early part of the 20th century, oil would have started to be overtaken. It would have happened. And the technologies that Tesla and others developed would have by now overtaken oil and we would be living in a different world where every human would have access to energy. Every human minus nobody would have access to all the energy they need. If these technologies had not been suppressed. No question about it. Ditto for the field of healing. By now, we would have seen incredible breakthrough healing of the entire range of human disease if technologies had been allowed to develop. Mm -hmm.
That's all we need. Okay, we're coming to a break here. This is John Rappaport sitting in for Alex Jones on InfoWars Radio. And don't forget to go to InfoWarsLife.com to see about some breakthrough new health products. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt... Sitting in for Alex Jones on our last segment, talking about energy, energy suppression. I was reminded that... Take these names down. Nick Gonzalez, doctor in New York. Stan Brzezinski, doctor in Houston. Dr. Joseph Gold in New York State, three breakthrough technologies, medical technologies. And I don't mean by that, oh, this cures everybody all the time. People sometimes write to me. What do they think I am, some kind of a complete rube? Take this and everybody in the world will be cured all the time. Hold on. What these doctors were saying is very promising. It works. We've seen it work. We want to study it further because we know it can be applied to more people. It's been shown to work. With gold, it was hydrazine sulfate for cancer patients. Nick Gonzalez in New York, an enzyme and nutritional protocol for cancer. Stan Brzezinski in Houston, neoplastins, a protocol for cancer. And here's the kicker, folks. Eventually, all of these three were studied by the official domain of medical science. In other words, clinical trial with volunteers forced into it by pressure and pressure. All right, we'll look at it. We'll look at it. And then every single one of those clinical trials in all these cases were perverted and twisted. The protocols were changed to produce a negative and disastrous outcome. That's what we're dealing with here. Murderers. That's what we're dealing with. People who murder in order to protect, in this case, a monopoly of the toxic drug pharmaceutical complex and cartel. But the difference between sickness and health is all about energy. The difference between a society of scarcity and abundance is all about energy. And if you want to talk about free energy, what it really means is not just energy out of nowhere. It means actual energy delivered for free or for pennies to everybody on the planet. Yes, it can be sold. Of course it can be sold. It doesn't have to be sold at any kind of a high price. It can be sold for pennies to everybody, in which case whoever is producing this technology, however many companies are all making a nice profit, nobody's suffering, everybody's having an abundance of energy. We have to liberate this fact about where the world is now. We have to liberate these technologies and more technologies that will give us the abundance that we need in terms of human energy and the energy to run civilization. That's the agenda. That's the agenda that the elites are trying to destroy and distract us from with all of this other insanity that goes on day by day by day by day. That's why wars are created at the highest level. Control the monopoly, control the one basic form of energy that we have. The big lie. Distract everybody. Give them all kinds of high-flying idealistic reasons for war and destroying each other. Oh, yes, we have to do it in the name of this and that and the other thing. No, all you have to do is turn your attention to the suppressed technologies. Thanks so much, folks, for tuning in. John Rappaport sitting in for Alex Jones, InfoWars Radio. My site is no more fake news.com. You can read my work there. We'll see you up the road.